Hello there, AP human people. Let's jump into a lesson on the importance of scale. Let's make this magic happen. This isn't going to be a super long presentation, but we're just going to talk about scales on maps, why they're important, why it's something you should always keep in mind, especially when writing FRQ responses. So let's check it out. How big is big? How far is far? What is this map in relationship to the real world? So yeah, this is really what we're talking about here. The scale, the 0 to 7.5 miles. Usually you find it in the bottom left corner of every map. So this is a map of Northern California. Look, it's even labeled. And there's Half Moon Bay. Uh, oh, well, there's is right there. Um, so roughly how far away is Half Moon Bay from Burley Murray Ranch State Park? Well, we have no idea if we just looked at this part of the map, but you got to look at the scale. So it looks like maybe Half Moon Bay and Burley Ranch State Park are 2.5 miles apart. Okay, that's what that's what the scale's all about. So how far away is San Mateo from the Half Moon Bay Airport? You're also going to have to sort of use some judgment here. Probably 10 miles as the bird flies, but then you've got to go around the roads. That would be even longer. Uh, okay, and then let's look at the scale of these two houses. One house is hashtag Southern Highlands Life, and one house is not so much. So uh, which which one would you rather live in? You decide the scale's important. And then here's the reality too. So the, the advertisements of Burger King make you believe that the burgers are so awesome and amazing, but in reality, they are scaled down to a great degree, and they're not very attractive. Uh, okay, so these are the starting questions today. What's the farthest you've ever been away from home? Have you ever looked out the window of an airplane? What did you notice? And what is your definition of big? What is your definition of small? So these are kind of the ideas we have to think about when we look at maps. All right, so scale. A comparison of distances on the map as the distances on real life planet Earth. And now this is a concept that kids always screw up with scale. When you're looking at a map that has a very large scale, you are super zoomed in because you're, you're, if, if it's a large scale in real life, you can like be there and see everything almost at the right sizes. But a small scale is when something is super zoomed out. So if you're looking from a satellite, the scale is going to be really small because there's not a lot of detail. You can't see a lot of things, but at a large scale, it's much more visible to the human eye, okay? So just think about in respect to the human eye. Small scale is the eye can't see a lot of details. Large scale is you can see, hopefully, many, many details. But, but then again, with large scale, you can also super zoom in, like these uh, pictures from microscopes. Microscopes make something look larger. Macroscopes make something look smaller than it really is. So these are concepts we'll talk about today. But it's a question on the test. Kids always screw it up. If you're in a satellite looking at the world, the world looks small. But in reality, the world is very large. So it is a small scale. But if we're just wandering around Las Vegas, looking at a map of the Las Vegas Strip, and we're there on the Las Vegas Strip, and we're like, oh, yeah, that's that building, that's that building. Well, then that map is a very large-scale map because it's, it's very easily recognizable to us. Okay, so hopefully I explained that really well. If you have questions, please let me know. Uh, yeah, it's a confusing concept. Kids always get it wrong. All right, let's check it out. So once again, here's a map of, oh, I thought this was Las Vegas. I guess Sacramento. So the small scale is when it's zoomed out and you only see like the whole city, but a large scale is where you zoom in and you see individual streets and buildings and all that fun stuff. Okay, so this is also a large scale map. Or so, oh, see, I even screwed it up. This is a small scale map because in real life, no human being could see Alaska look like this unless they were in outer space. This is a large scale. You are zooming in to cells and individual organisms. Uh, this is probably like a medium scale, uh, because yeah, the, the human hand, it's something you would normally see. This is, the, this is probably right, right between what we would decide as a, a large scale or a small scale. But then again, if you're looking at this, uh, on, on your computer screen, this is probably larger 
than in real life, so this would be a small scale. This is a large scale, and this is a very small scale, because Jupiter is a gigantic planet that's like, all, is it almost as big as the sun? I don't know. It's, it's, it's the biggest planet out there, so it's a small scale. Uh, okay, so now let's rank these pictures from smallest to largest in scale. So uh, I would give students a chance to do this in class, but number two is the smallest scale, is the entire United States. And then number three is the next smallest. That one has all five boroughs of New York. Um, then we're probably going to number five because that one still has a couple of the boroughs. Then we're going to go to number one, which is just Manhattan. Then we're going to go to number four, which zooms in on Central Park. So you're just zooming in more and more and more. You keep making the map larger in how it's how a human being would see it in real life. So it is sort of the opposite thinking because you look at number two and you're like, oh, that's the entire United States. That's really big. But you are zoomed way out, which in scale sense, it is small. Yeah, it's like the opposite way of thinking. All right, so yep, these are just all the different maps. And then yeah, Central Park. So this is the largest scale of all these maps. Uh, okay, so here's, uh, what does it say, five, six? Yeah, I, I just use five. Five most commonly measured map scales you gotta know for human geography. If you utilize these terms when you look at maps, AP readers just love you, okay? They, they, they think you're just smarter and better. So every time you see a map, hopefully we can have this analysis. Is the map local, metropolitan, state, province, country, regional, or world? And regional and world, they'll overlap quite a bit. That's why I said it's really like five scales. Um, so yeah, a local scale, what does that look like? The map is 10 miles or less. You're gonna see buildings, you're gonna see streets, a map of Southern Highlands, uh, a map of, yeah, I would say Henderson, yeah. Um, but not a map of all of Las Vegas. The, the, yeah, and see, that's the next scale. Metropolitan, a real-life map between 10 and 30 miles. Uh, you'll probably just see freeways and major streets. Like, I don't think a, a big map of the entire Las Vegas Valley would ever highlight the street that uh, Desert Oasis High School is on, for example. So, yeah, the metropolitan area of Las Vegas is about 25 square miles, and that includes Henderson, Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Summerlin, all those fun places. So metropolitan is even bigger. Then you go to state or province. So this is like a state map. Um, maybe you're measuring a section of the country. So I would, I would say that a state or province map could include multiple states because sometimes like Nevada is just sort of thrown in with like California and Oregon because they always get so much more credit than us. Um, all right, and then a, a country map is where maybe you're focused on one or a few countries that border each other. Uh, then you get to the regional map, and we've already talked about the regions of the world in this class. And then you're looking at larger and larger areas of the globe. And the final scale is the world scale, which is always a map of the world. There's no, no diversity in that choice. Uh, all right, let's keep moving on. All right, so yeah, let's do maps again. Tell me local, metropolitan, state, country, regional. I don't think I have any world maps on here. You know what those look like. So let's check them out. So this would be a uh, country map highlighting an individual state, but the official map would be country. And then this is, of course, a state map, but it is highlighting individual counties. And then what do we got here? Yeah, this is uh, probably, I would say, a regional map because you also got Canada and Mexico on there. But it's sort of only trying to highlight the United States, specifically Alaska. And then this would be a local map because you're seeing individual streets. You're seeing some individual buildings being highlighted. This is the very tip of Manhattan Island in New York. And then this would also be a local map. I think you see Wall oh, Broadway's right there, Brooklyn Bridge. That's cool. And then this would be a uh, probably a metropolitan map because you're not seeing all the individual streets. You're not seeing all the, the roads. Yes, this is just the Bronx, which is one part of New York City. But for it to be a local map, we would need to see all the streets. And this is kind of zoomed out, so you're just seeing the highways and the major streets. And this would be a, eh, I'd probably call this a regional map again. You might even say country map. It could be debated. 
And this is a state level map. Yep, just see a bunch of stuff about New York. This would be a metropolitan map because you're just looking at the island of Manhattan, dividing it into its neighborhoods. It wouldn't be local. If you zoomed in on any of those individual neighborhoods in Manhattan, then those would be uh, local maps. Um, yeah, this is the new the Manhattan subway system. I have so many New York maps in this presentation. Um, this would be metropolitan because you got Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Man, the New York subway I hear is just crazy. Uh, okay, this would be a statewide map, but it's trying to highlight an individual region up there with New England. This would be a metropolitan map. Once again, it's New York. Jeez, I gotta, I gotta really switch things up. Uh, this would probably be a local map. It's kind of hard to tell. This is an older map of Brooklyn. Maybe those were all the streets in Brooklyn back in the day, so maybe it is local. Um, this one, ooh, ah, this one's a little tricky. You are seeing just about all the streets, so I really want to say local, but you have both New York and parts of New Jersey in there, so maybe it's metropolitan. Um, yeah, this one's right on right on the line. I, I'm more comfortable saying local because I believe all the streets are present. Uh, this one's absolutely a local map. Yep, just, just showing in that. Uh, this one, ooh, well, first of all, this isn't a map. This is just a picture. But I would describe this as metropolitan because you would see all the island of Manhattan and everything beyond it. And I think this one has a lot of them. So this is the regional slash maybe country. Um, then this is the state map. Then this is, well, this is still state. But now we're zooming into metropolitan uh, map of Montreal. Uh, all right, let's see what else we got to talk about. So there are some problematic maps where the scales are terrible. Uh, when these happen, they're usually with those cartogram style maps, but when the scale is bad, then people's perceptions of that place is bad as well. Uh, for example, the people of Texas, those, those Texans, they always like to talk about how amazing and great they are, and these are <laughs> three maps I found where Texas really tries to insinuate how how wonderful they are. Let me, let me share this short little story with you because I think it's hilarious. So uh, I have some friends who live in the Netherlands in Europe and when they visited me here in the United States I heard them make this comment like I told them like hey you guys want to go skydiving and they were like no nah, that's so Texas. And I'm like what? What are you talking about? And they tried to explain it to me and in the Netherlands you know they like speak Dutch and they're like Dutch, 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 Texas. Like they think they, they've used the word Texas in their, their vocabulary to describe something that is crazy or outrageous. Um, and I, I think that's that's just so funny being an American. I love Texas. I've been there a couple times. It's a great state. But I mean, Texas really likes to show off. Okay. So obviously, this map is not to scale. Uh, Texas, El Paso does not border the Pacific Ocean. Um, Texas does not border Canada. But uh, why would Texans draw a map like this? It's because they want to show their their huge importance to the United States, and they want to feel like they are d thoroughly dominating the other states. I mean, they are the biggest state in the continental states. Um, a Texan's map of the United States. So this is funny how they labeled all the other states as like things that are kind of kind of funny. But uh, Texas is is definitely the the main character here. Um, what else we got here? Yep, <laughs> these maps are just common. Everything's bigger in Texas. It's true. And uh, here's a map of the Las Vegas Strip that was put in a advertisement. Um, obviously. This is not the Las Vegas Strip, okay? Like, they got the scale way wrong. Um, but they're trying to advertise the MGM Grand Lion, New York, New York Hotel, the Luxor, uh, the Excalibur. But w why is this not Las Vegas? What? Why would someone draw a map of Las Vegas like this? Um, well, first of all, we don't have big running oceans and rivers, and we don't have, like, a jungle, obviously. Um, we don't have a big old mountain in the middle of the strip. I don't know what that's about. Um, but uh, they want to try to advertise Las Vegas as some sort of paradise. I mean, 
you know, I'm not, I'm not saying they're wrong. Like, you know, the city's all right, but uh, yeah, it's it's just funny how the scale was so terrible on this map. Um, all right, so yeah, these mushroom spores too small to see, so we put them under a microscope. Yeah, you guys don't have to write down this slide, but it's it's a relation to the next slide. So microscopes make small things look bigger. All right, but then this is what you got to know. A macroscope is a way of seeing something that's too big for humans to normally see in a smaller way, okay? And that's, I, I probably should have included this with the scale part because this really explains that concept. Every single map we'll ever use in the class of human geography is a macroscope map. It is a map that, I mean, I guess if you're flying in an airplane and you look down, you could probably see what the map is showing you, but you're just going to have to take the map's word for it that if you were hanging out in the International Space Station looking on planet Earth, this is what planet Earth looks like. And, uh, you know, I had this great moment when I was a teenager. My family went to Hawaii, and it was a clear, beautiful day. We're flying into Honolulu International Airport. I look out the window, and sure enough, it's the islands of Hawaii. And they're like, it was just so cool to, to see the complete islands that looked the exact same way they look on a map. I was like, maps aren't lying to me. This is amazing. So yes, I can confirm with my own eyes that the islands of Hawaii truly do, are shaped and look and appear as they appear on a map. Um, so I, I trust macroscope maps. They have made things that are too big for me to see and put them in a conceptual way. All right. So yeah, some things are very tiny. We must use complex electronic and op optical means, example, a microscope, to enlarge them, to understand them and their configuration, their relationships. In contrast, geographical things are so big, we must somehow reduce them to bring them into view. There you go. That's the idea. Yeah, and here's uh, the International Space Station took this picture. So what part of the world is this? This is Europe, Northern Africa, the Middle East. You even see like India way over there. But yeah, they, they took this picture and like somehow edited out clouds and weather patterns and stuff. So yeah, the world really does look like this. Um, okay, so yeah, maps or macroscopes. Think critically about the world and problem spots on the world stage. That's smart. All right, so... This is the real life sizes of the United States and Germany, okay? So how many Germanys would fit in the United States? I don't know, maybe like 10? That's an estimation right there. So yeah, we are significantly larger than Germany. And look, these maps are using the exact same scale, so that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and <laughs> yeah, the aggressor nation? Germany fought both world wars, and Germany didn't have any colonies or didn't really have any any other countries around the world helping them out too much. Well, I guess Japan in World War II. But Great Britain owned all this land across all of planet Earth. So uh, which side's going to win? You know, there's, there's, it's, it's the, the which, which side is truly the, the bigger threat? Uh, oh, and, oh, you know, there was one more. Oh, yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. Oh, dang it. Now I'm zooming all over the place. What have I done? I'm, I'm off the, off the rails. Um, yeah, so this is the one I wanted to show. So, in German school atlases, they would show this map, uh, and they would be right next to each other like this, and the scale is different for each map, because they wanted Germany to appear to be as large, or maybe even larger than the United States, and they highlighted five big cities in the United States, they highlighted five big cities in Germany, so they're implying, like, Germany is equal to the United States, when in reality, we got 10 times more land, we got pr at least 10 times more people, so sorry, sorry Germans, we got your beat. Alright, that's it for me today, peace out.